Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson covers the use of XSLT to display XML data visually. Since XML makes a good database platform but lacks any native visual component, it would be useful to be able to plug XML data into another more visual document type. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the different varieties of the XSL or XML stylesheet language. We'll take a look at how that contrasts with the style sheet language we've looked at before in this course called CSS. And we'll take a look at an example of an XSL transformation. XSLT provides for visual display of XML data by placing the contents of XML elements into elements of another XML document type that's more visually oriented, such as XHTML. First, let's get all of these various languages straight. XSL stands for XML Style Sheet Language. It comes in two different varieties. One is called XSLFO, and the FO stands for Format Object. This is somewhat like CSS in that we take each part of the document and give a very detailed description of how it should appear visually in a variety of media. It's actually not that widely used except in certain professional situations. The most wide use of it is to take an XML document and turn it into an Adobe PDF type file. The one we'll be taking a look at today is XSLT, and the T stands for Transform. What we're doing here is we're creating a template in another XML document type and plugging our XML data into it. Now that we're clear which XML language we're talking about, let's compare it with another styling language that we've seen before. Let's take a look at XSLT versus CSS. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at a couple of files here. Here's our message1.xml file. It's a pretty basic file of the message type that we've used before in the course. It has a from element, a to element, a message text element and a sig element. In this case, the signature just contains text. Other versions that we've done haven't. And up here, we're using an XML style sheet declaration or processing instruction to say that we're bringing in a text file written in CSS that's located in a file called messagestyle.css. And if we take a look at messagestyle.css, which is also included, it's pretty basic formatting. I want everything to appear on its own line by using the block display property. And I'm setting text style for each of my individual elements so they look a little bit different from each other and appear in slightly different portions of the screen. And this way, by combining my message.xml file, message1.xml, with the messagestyle.css file, if I then go to my browser, it looks like this. Okay, Each element is on its own line and each has its own slightly different style. And this is what we've seen before in terms of styling with uh, XML and CSS. And one thing we notice is that CSS has a completely different syntax than XML. This is because CSS was originally designed for the HTML language and CSS, if you're familiar with web design, can be used interspersed with your HTML. So in order to make that easy to program for, they wanted CSL, CSS to be in a completely different appearance so that as your browser processed through the file and it found some CSS data, it realized, hey, I'm not in XML land anymore. I'm not in HTML land anymore. However, including text that isn't XML in an XML document is actually kind of a tricky ordeal, and it actually makes things more difficult. So that creates the desire for an XML-based style language so that your XML processor can handle everything. All right. Also included is a file called message2. This is the exact same content as the message1.xml file. The only difference is that its style sheet processing instruction is pulling in a text file written in XSL, and it's in a file called messagetemplate.xsl. Let's take a brief look at that file. And without getting too deep into what we're looking at here, we see this actually has a lot of web page type stuff in it. But it is an XML file up here. And we see that some of the elements within the page have these strange XSL 
qualified name prefixes. All right, we see that here and here and in a couple other places. So XSL is very much an HTML or an XML language, but it's in XML syntax, and that allows your XML processor to have an easier time sorting it all out. You can use namespaces to distinguish when you're in your XML file and when you're working with XSL. Also, CSS is more of an identifying language, whereas XSL has a little bit more capability to it. You can actually do minor programming in XSL, so it contains a certain amount of intelligence, and that can be key in using your XML data in another format. So let's see XSLT at work by taking some XML data and plugging it into an HTML web page. You'll find a file called addresspage.html. And this is an ordinary HTML file. We're actually not going to be using it other than just to look at it and see what it is. All right, it's a basic web page. It's got a table in it. And we've included a caption for our table and some headers here for name, address, phone, and email. All right, and each of these is going to be part of a database of, let's say, an address book that we have or a contact list. And what we're going to do is we're going to be creating extra rows of the table to contain individual records from an XML database. The first step is to create an XSL template. And you'll find a file called address template.xsl to follow along with. And if you look closely, it's the exact same file but it's got a whole lot of stuff surrounding it. Let's take a look at what we've done here. First of all, we've given it an XML declaration just to make sure we're very clear here. Um, the first element is called XSL style sheet, or really it's just a style sheet element, but it includes the XSL namespace prefix, which we declare right here. Now, if you watched our namespace lesson, you learned that namespaces can be just about anything. So technically, we could call our XSL prefix anything we want to. We could call it Fred, we could call it Style, we could call it what we want to. If we believe that any browser that's going to accompany it is a perfectly con conformant XML processor and doesn't expect to see the XSL prefix with XSL elements. You can't always count on that, so it's probably a good idea to always declare XSL to have this prefix, XSL. And here's the namespace for that. And then our first actual element, our root level element, is style sheet, but then the next one under that is template. And the template element has to have a match attribute, and the match attribute is a slash. Now what exactly is this? Well, let's take a moment 